giving us a storage capacity of 8 terabytes with with they are here finally all the pieces to build my tiny NAS home server have arrived come on let's build it first let's go over the hardware that i'm going to be using to build this the cpu is the amd ryzen 3 300 2000 g this is a four cores four thread cpu that is going to be completely capable of running our NAS software plus a little bit of extra headroom if we want to use it as a Minecraft server, for example, or a Plex media server. And even if it's not the greatest or the latest, I choose it because of the low TDP of only 65 watts and because it also includes eight Radeon GPU cores on it, what facilitates the ability to don't need to install a discrete graphic cards for the initial setup. For the RAM, we go overkill. With 32 GB of G-Skill Trident C, glorious RGB, even though that our case, it doesn't have any windows on it. But anyway, more on the case later. It was the memory that I have laying around for another build, so what the heck, why not? The motherboard is the Asus A320iK, again, somehow overkill for our application, but I choose it because of the price and reliability. I have been an Asus user for years, and I still haven't had any problems with them. This motherboard is a micro ATX board, and it also includes a place for an M.2 drive that sadly we're not going to be using right now, but it's good to have for the future. And it should be completely compatible with our CPU right here. And now, you are going to tell me, uh, but Enrique, this only have four SATA ports, what kind of server are you going to do? Well, my friends, this is where this come in hand. This is a Broadcom LSI 92118i SATA SAS HBA controller card that is going to give us the ability to hook up to 12 drives on it, giving you enough expandability for now and the future. Just make sure that you flash it into the IT mode or when you pick one up that is already flashed, so it will not do the works of a RAID controller, but more of a pass-through for all your drives and check of course the compatibility with your NAS software we're going to be using on -rate for this build and I know it's going to be working right out of the box now for the hard drive we're going to be using Seagate Iron Wolf NAS drive that are perfectly fine for this but if you're planning into using more than eight drives together in one case I will recommend you that you get the Iron Wolf Pro I'm going to be using a mix of two 2TB drives and two 4TB ones, giving us a storage capacity of 8TB with redundancy. Once more because it's what I have in hand, and with the beauty of on -rate, that you're going to be able to add more drives or even to replace them with bigger capacity ones really easily down the line thanks to the ease of use of this software. But more about that later on when we are going to be setting up on -rate into the server. We are also going to be using a Samsung Evo 500GB SATA SSD that I have driving around for cache to speed a little bit up or write speeds into our NAS server and even we can use it as a virtual drive if we are going to be running any type of virtualization into our machine. And finally, the case. There are not too many small cases that can accommodate a big amount of drive, so I went for the Silverstone DS380. This tiny case can accommodate for a total of eight three and a half or two and a half hot swappable drives thanks to the backplane and up to four two and a half drives giving you a total capacity of 12 drives it has a beautiful brush aluminum front door that can be locked to close the access to the hard drive base especially useful if you have the server at the floor next to your main pc in the living room like i do and you have a really curious two-year-old son even the power button can be locked, so it's perfect for such an application when your son is going to be running around, trying to open everything and touching everything that he can, so he don't turn off by accident or remove a hard drive on your server. The Corsair SF600 will be giving the power to all of these parts with their 80 plus platinum full modular SFX PSU. Again, overkill for the application, but you are never going to chip out on your power supply, especially especially to store your important data like family pictures, videos, or even if you are a content creator, all the files that you will ever need. And because of the low power needs of this system, 
This means that the fan is not even going to turn on most of the time with Corsair Zero RPM mode. Now guys, with all the components out of the way, let's build this bad boy out. We start by setting up our motherboard on top of the box as an improvised test bench. You want to try to build as much as you can outside of the case because it will be way easier as trying to cram everything inside of there. Don't forget to unload yourself from any static energy by using an anti-static wrist wrap. I have no idea where it's mine, but do as I say, not as I do, to avoid any static damage. Myself, I'm going to be grounding me, sometimes by touching some metal or the power supply connected to ground, but this is not a method I will recommend. To install the CPU, first we have to lift the rotation arm from the socket. Don't worry about the plastic cover, it should pop once we install our CPU inside. Now take your CPU carefully, and especially if you are using, like me, an AMD CPU, the pins are going to be here instead of in the motherboard. And if you bend it or break one of them, you can forget about your CPU, it's dead. Now, match the mark on your CPU with the one on the motherboard, normally it's a small triangle or a point, and set it inside of the socket, giving it a little bit of a wiggle to see if it's completely seated in. And close the retention arm with some force. Don't be afraid, it's normal that you will need to use a little bit of force on it, and the plastic cover should pop off. Now, open the plastic clips on the sides of your memory slot. Some motherboards will have only one, and some will have one on each side. Take your memory RAM and look at the notches on the sticks match the ones on your motherboard. Set them on it and apply equal pressure to both sides until you hear a click sound. To set them in correctly. With this case, I'm going to be installing the cooler included with the processor. It already comes with some thermal paste pre-applied. Normally, I will change it and set my own, but again, this processor and the use that we're going to be using is not going to get too warm. So the cooler and the paste included are perfectly fine for this. Every cooler have a different methods of installation, so check your user manual to see how to install yours. Connect the fan cable onto the CPU fan header on your motherboard while trying to route it nicely and you are set to go. Now is the time to start working inside of the case. If yours doesn't have the standoff of the motherboard pre-install it on it, now is the time to do it. You only have to screw them in. Place your IO shield first and don't forget about this step because it will be a pain to do it later. And now set your motherboard carefully inside of your case and put all the screws to secure it in place. I have already added three Noctua fans more into the case to keep everything cool and quiet. And now it's time to install your power supply and connect all the cables. I recommend you that you start with the bigger cable like the 12 pin to route them the best way possible and also add the eight or four pin CPU power in your case as you need it. And we are almost done. Secure your drivers into the caddies of your case with the included screws and don't forget to add all the power and SATA cables that you're going to need depending on your case, it will be different than mine, so I'm not going to dive really deep into this step. Now let's do some cable management, and we are pretty much done with the build. Now guys, let's jump into the software side of it. Go to the official OnRaid website and download it. You have a 30 days trial, and after that you will need to buy a license from them. No, it's not free, but it's an amazing software and the people on OnRaid really deserve it. Well, after you have downloaded and installed OnRaid into your USB stick, place the USB stick into your server and turn it on. This is the part of what I recommended before, that you have a CPU with a graphic chips in it. Because if you don't have it, you will need a discrete graphic card for the first step and initial setup of OnRaid. Now let's turn the server on and let's go into the BIOS. After you start your server and you go into the BIOS, you want to go into the advanced mode and set your boot option number one into your USB stick that you created. On RAID runs from this stick, so you are not going to need to write any files into your system. And that's pretty much all you have to do here right now. You only have to check that everything is here, that your CPU is correct, that your memory is correct, and that everything is running smooth. Now you want to click on Exit, Save Changes and Reset. Now the system should restart. If you don't see this right here, this is because of the RAID card that I have on. If you don't have one, you're not going to see this. 
Series, on right OS, GUI mode, click enter. The username by default is root, and you don't need a password for it. Now here is where you want to change some things. For example, I'm going to do right now the registration and to buy one copy of this. So you want to go right here and to go into purchase key. I know it's not a free software, you have 30 days to try it. But guys, this software is amazing. I really recommend you and the guys have worked a lot. I'll go to purchase a key. Here you can choose about the basic, but it's only for six drives. Plus, that is with 12 drives and pro that you can have how many drives as you want. I know I'm not going to use more than 12, so I'm going to choose the plus option. So guys, after you have added your key or your 30 day trial key, you want to go into settings so you want to change the name of your server. I'm going to name mine easy tech media server is okay custom is okay click apply of course you want to change the access and not to use it root without any password to secure yourself after you are set on done you can go into main and start to add drives into your parity and your own rate server for that you want to go into parity you want to assign at least my recommendation will be to have one drive for every five or six drives and you have to choose one that is the biggest capacity. For me, it's four terabytes, so I'm going to choose one four terabytes one. And now you can add all the drives that you have into your on right server. And if you scroll all the way down, if you have in your server an SSD, I recommend you that you add it as a cache drive for that you want to select right here. And you want to scroll all the way down and you want to click on start. That's it. So guys, when you're done with the initial setup of OnRaid, you don't need anymore to have the discrete graphic card in it, and you don't need to have any more connected to your monitor. All that you have to do is to open your web browser and type in the name that you put in your server. For me, it's EasyTech. It's going to ask you to log into your server. And now you can see you're inside of your server. You can do all the configurations that you want from here. So guys, as you can see, we have all the rights right here. The array have started, now right now it's making parity, but it's not files inside, so I don't think it's going to take too long. Maybe you have to wait. Six hours and two minutes, not a problem. But one thing that I wanted to show you is how to add a share. And for that you go right here into shares. And you see that you have all of this. You want to click on add a share. You want to say the name for me is going to be Easy Tech Files. You can leave it in high water. And the minimum free space is, you have to think like this, in the maximum size of file that you're going to transfer to the server. For me, I'm going to say it 100 or 200 gigabytes. And be sure that you use the cache for new files and directories to speed up a little bit the transfer and click on Add Share. And now, as you can see right here, you have this share right now. One more thing that you guys can do is to go into your file manager right here and if you want to see right here the disk now guys you can go into your network go inside of your server and select this folder and now you want to map as network drive apply a letter and click on finish now as you can see you have it it's empty right now but when you go into your pc you can see the full capacity that for me is almost eight terabytes and you can start right now copying files in there. Let's try a small file just to test it out. Let's try one of my old videos only like this to try the speed and nothing more. And that is pretty much it. You can see this is one gigabyte file and the speeds are really not that bad. We're copying it right now to the cache drive and then it will be set into the array. So guys, I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please write me in the comments down below. If you're interested that I make you a tutorial how to create a PEX server or a micro server in your own RAID server, just let me know, okay? I always try to answer you all. Like the video if you like it, and if you're new to the channel, a subscriber is always welcome. Once more, thanks for watching and see you on the next time. Bye bye.